Deacon Riddle T. Wright. And a 
pastor is no longer here, came to my house at 10 o'clock in the morning, knocked on the door and told me to come to Namsco Baptist Church. And when I walked through those doors, my angels were here. Amen. So it was no question that this way I was supposed to be. Amen. Now, I ain't know what God was doing then. Now, I can't tell you that I did because I was running the streets pretty hard back then. But I knew that I was supposed to be in here. And so I came here. I ran the streets and I came here when I was in trouble. This was home. And then my pastor came. Reverend Perry passed away. Pastor Spates came. And Pastor Spates told me something that I never realized, and that was Jesus. I came to church all those years, but I didn't know Jesus. I didn't know him. Yeah, I got baptized because Alice Wright said, you won't get baptized. That's what she said, and that's what we did. I like the kids today, my mama say something. You did it. She didn't play. So, Pastor, I thank you for your teacher, your mentor, to get me to this point, allowing me the opportunity to stand in this holy place today and share this word. Okay, we we'll get situated here. We're going to say a prayer. We're going to give us this little, little message. I'm not going to keep y'all long, I promise. Let's take our hearts and souls to our Heavenly Father once again, Father. We thank you for this day, Father. We thank you for now this anointed time that you have placed your people, Father. I first ask you to set me behind your cross, Father. Let them see all of your Son, Jesus Christ. Let them hear his voice through me, Father. I'm nothing but a servant, Father. Doing your will, Father. You call me out of Set me in your marvelous life, Father. I'm on your wall now, Father. And I'm blowing the horn loud to let people know that the enemy is coming and what they must do, Father, to be saved. So now, Father, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable for you and your people, Father. I pray this in all things in your Son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Church as a start, if I put a title to this message, I will ask a question, why are we wandering through this life and not following the leader's instruction? I want to highlight just two verses out of the scripture that we've read today. Verse 8 and 9. I want to specifically want to focus on two unique points in this scripture. This book of the law that shall not depart out your mouth. That means you need to be talking about it. And we should meditate it on it day and night. And we should preserve it according to all that is written there in the instructions. Of for then thou shalt make thy way prosper, and then thou shalt have good success. The promise. Okay. <clears throat> Pastor Navsko, I promise I'm not going to be a three point preacher. That's Pastor's original style, and I'm not going to imitate it or take it away from it. That's a problem. <laughs> but I just want to spend a few minutes this afternoon uh, talking to you from a word on how from our Father. It will help us just increase our knowledge of His will for our lives. See, church, accepting God's will is always a simple thing. But for us who are yet far from holiness and sainthood, it is often such an easy to accept his will. See, our lives are still complicated. Our desires and our aims are mixed up and confused. Our sight and our vision are clouded and sometimes even blinded. No wonder Jesus told us to consider the birds and the living, and are we much more valuable than that? Matthew 6, 25 and 26. See, we spend so much time talking about things and 
looking at TV and playing games and reading books and deep and mystery, mysterious things. And we miss seeing all the little things that God has to show us. We rarely consider a bird in their precious simplicity. Let's consider this little bird called the chickadee. He lives in a slow blade evergreen. The chickadee wears this little black hat, a little gray coat. <clears throat> he whispers tingly songs all day long. He don't do nothing but what he was made to do. God had put a seed up under the snow for him, and he picks and chirps at that seed. God tells him where that seed is at to go look over here. See, church, I think we should be like that. We should want nothing else but to do what we were made to do. Yeah. I am sure in his confidence that this is what God intended for our lives. But how shall we know what to do except in the quietness of meditation in his word? How can we listen and learn if we are always full of conversation, always got busy things to do, somewhere to go and something to do? I mean, how? See, church, we, we must cease from the rehearsal of our personal lives, our wants, our desires, our feelings. We must willingly, willingly, because that's the key, free will, willingly release things that seem important. But in fact, they don't have nothing to do with God's plan and his purpose for our lives. See, as God placed that seed for that bird to find, he had placed his hidden wisdom in his word, which is his secret purpose framed from the very beginning to bring us to the full glory of Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 2, 6 and 7. Open the Bible and read it. See, this message today poses a few questions. Why are you wandering through this life? Why are you not following the leader? Why are you not reading the Bible, what we call the basic instruction before you leave earth? Or in layman's term, the SOP, the standard operating procedure for this life. Why we are not using it? I mean, why we are not using it? See, this scripture that was read into our hearing today, it commands us. It don't ask, it don't recommend, but it commands and directs us. Amen. It says it this way. Not for one minute to let the instructions of this book of Revelations or the Bible be out your mind. It tells you to ponder. That means to spend some time. When people don't know what ponder means, it means to spend some time. Uh, uh, then it tells us to think of these words. That means to concentrate. Concentrate, that means you got to have everything off in your life to concentrate. It tells us to think about the words what, which is saying to us and to meditate on it day and night. Now, day and night. So I got out of that. God said, don't stop thinking about my word ever. Because there ain't nothing there but day and night in our lives. So that's what I got out of that when I read. It goes on to tell us to make sure we practice everything that's written in this book. I'm talking about the Bible now, and not a uh, uh, perfect driven life and all those other books that we read. But I'm talking about the Bible. As we know, the word practice means to carry out or apply something, such as practice what you preach. You know, that's the saying, people, you practice what you preach. Do you really know what that means? To perform or work at something repeated as to become proficient. Mm -hmm. Doing it over and over again. It's okay to read the same scripture. We want to read a book one time and put it down. It's okay to do it over and over again. That's right. That's right. That's right. We could practice exercising our faith. Practice being polite. Practice extending a helping hand to people. Amen. We could practice just loving one another as Jesus Christ had loved us. Amen. Or we could practice just being faithful Amen. in worship and praise to our Heavenly Father. Just, just practice that. Ain't nobody got to be around. You ain't got to come to church. Amen. 
then it shares with us this promise that we shall receive something. The promise that you will get where you're going and the promise that you'll be prosperous and have good success. Now understand the promise. It is a legal binding declaration. It gives the person to whom is made to the right to expect something. To expect be saved from sin. Expect to have a prosperous life here. Psalms 1, 1 and 3 says, Blessed is the man who walk not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the path of the sinner, nor sit in the seat of the storm. But he delights, that's love, that's enjoy. He delights in the law or the, or the instructions of the Lord. And this is what he does. And his law he meditates day and night. So, so let's go back to blessed man. How are you going to be blessed if you're not meditating day and night? You look for a blessing. But look at the promise. He shall be like a tree planted by the river of the water that brings forth fruit in its season. And check this out. Your leaves will never well. Never. That means you're always blooming. You're always blooming. You're always fruitful. Your life is fruitful. And whatever he does, prosper. That's the promise. That's on this side we're talking about. And this is one of many promises that the Bible had. But if you're not what? Meditating on it. You ain't got no idea about what's promised to you. Then we got this expectation of this eternal life that we've been hearing about. You know, all of us don't lost loved ones on the other side. We got this promise. Do you remember as a kid we played a game called Father the Leader? The basic idea was to mimic the, the antics of the person in front of them. That means somebody had to be in front of them. Somebody had to go ahead of them. Church, I pose the question again. Why are you wandering through this life and not following the leader that have gone ahead of you? This is how Jesus said it. Now, this ain't Brother Wright, but Jesus said this. He said, in my Father's house, there are many mansions or rooms. If it were not so, I would have not told you so. Y'all used to hearing that at funerals. But it's really talking about today. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you with me that you also may be there where I am. You know the way to the place where I'm going. You know it. Thomas said to the Lord, we don't know where you're going, Lord. So how can we know the way? And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father self through me. John 14. Four and six, and that was the NIV version. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. See, these scriptures explain the promise, mm. the way to salvation, mm. to eternal life and glory. Mm. That's what these scriptures explain. We can look forward to eternal life because Jesus promised it. Yeah. He said, yeah. I have went and prepared the place. He promised that. But you got to believe him. Amen. You got to trust him. You got to follow his instructions. You got to follow the commandments. You got to do like Jesus did. He did the Father's will. Yeah. Yeah. See, now, church, the only issue that's still unself, ah, unself, unself. You know, last Sunday with Easter Sunday, I heard a couple of sermons about Easter Sunday. Jesus got up on the cross and it was all done. 